Folks, I think there is something going on in the real estate market in its entirety that is not being talked enough about. And I think it's something Jonathan and I can talk about from kind of multiple levels. And that is just the pain going on in the lending market. If you are somebody looking to get a deal done, if you are somebody looking to refi a deal, uh, I don't think you understand what is going on. And frankly, if lending gets tight enough, it all by itself could cause deals to lock up and freeze. Jonathan, I know you are in uh, at least one deal at this point, working with banks, trying to get it done. I think you've had to get an extension given the timeline. I'm currently buying a brand new home. So it's I'm seeing kind of the same things, but uh, yeah, what's going on in the lending market? Is this a cause for concern or just a big fat nothing burger? Uh, I mean, it's sort of somewhere in the middle, I think, right? I mean, okay. there's, there's, um, so let me kind of give you some, some background on this, right? There, there. Obviously, we've all been through the SVB, the mm -hmm. Republic collapse, and, and those things are giving um, the banks pause for sure. But I think it's really more about the fact that with interest rates rising so much, a lot of banks, even if they're not in a in a desperate situation, they're still in a situation where they have to change their their liquidity ratios. They have to like rebalance themselves, right? And so I was talking with a banker. Uh, actually, we were on a panel together uh, at the MFIN conference in Charlotte a few weeks ago. And one of the things that the the banker, this was the state of the market panel that I, I, I'm on every year uh, at MFIN. And the, the banker named Sam Morris, who uh, actually owns a bank, he actually started his own bank and he owns a bank. Nice. And very, yeah, very interesting guy. Uh, he was he was talking about the fact that the in order to rebalance their 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 books like to get their liquidity ratios back to where they need to be the fastest way to do it is just to stop lending right they mm. just continue to take deposits in right? right but they just don't lend the money out and so right. a lot of banks are currently in that situation where they're just it's pencils down except if a deal is just smoking and they can't let the opportunity pass by because they're just in this mode of hey, we're just in we're just in deposit taking mode right now, right. just to get to get our liquidity ratio back to where it needs to be, and and so it's it's as simple as that. It's it's not it's not necessarily that the banks are dealing with fear or mm -hmm. the banks are uh, you know think the market's going to collapse or any of these other kind of you know doom scenarios that we that we hear about. It's it's because they have to get, you know, they got to get their liquidity ratios right. So that right. that's a big factor. Now, the way that this is affecting people is, uh, I mean, I'm going through this right now. The banks are kind of slow walking everything, right? And, you know, I, I'm working on a hotel deal right now. We've been talking to uh, the same bank for 10 weeks. I'm used to mm -hmm. getting a term sheet in a week, right? having you know a signed offer from the bank in two weeks and then you're getting into due diligence right and you're getting your mm -hmm. deal docs uh negotiated and signed and we, we haven't done any of that we have a term sheet took it took them eight or nine weeks to get a term sheet to us we got the term sheets you know we signed it we sent it back now we're still waiting you know our mortgage brokers talking to them every day they want to do the deal that's not the issue just everything is just really slow and if you see you know, again, like you mentioned, and I think we're going to talk about this later about uh, interest rates going up more because the economy is so strong, and everybody is now pricing a, another Fed hike into things. So you know, yeah. the bank is probably kind of like waiting and looking at that too. They're going, okay, you know, if interest rates are, you know, what's the Fed going to do? Are interest rates going to go up? Uh, you know, should we wait another couple of weeks before we put a firm offer on the table? Because, you know, whatever. So, yeah. It, it is it is definitely slowing things down and and, and you see this sort of across uh, the economy and I think it's making it probably harder also for the riskier stuff to get done right you know mm -hmm. uh, it's it's making it harder across the board but it's making it especially harder for things that are that are riskier for for banks and you know yeah. even though the the economic news continues to be good you know we've had so much just the steady drumbeat of 
doomsayers and naysayers mm -hmm. saying that the economy is going to collapse and the banks coming out and saying there's going to be a recession because interest rates have gone up and yet it continues not to happen. Um, I think the banks are also concerned about that. Well, what if there's a recession and they're sort of operating, you know, they're all people just like us. They, yeah. they react the same way to the news that we do. They don't have any kind of special insights that we don't have uh, in terms of like emotion. So uh, I think that's, that's happening across the board right so yeah the, the other thing i think is happening with with banks not only getting the deal done like you're you're in the process of but this actually came from your event that you hosted in vegas that i was lucky enough to be in the audience for and there are banks that are looking at the liquidity ratio and not only saying we're not going to lend but we're going to force you know existing mortgage holders to refi with someone else or sell because mm -hmm. again, the, the best way to get cash up is to, you know, have a note that comes due and say, you're not going to renew. Uh, that's another way to get to a payoff and some, some cash injection. So, yeah, I exactly. And, yeah. and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that was something, you know, I mean, you, you had pointed that out to me based on your experience. I raised that at the conference and then uh, again, at the, at the MFIN conference in Charlotte, I, I raised that. I actually made that same point again. And Sam, the banker, equity he said, yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, banks are also wow. having to, to rebalance their portfolios because they've gotten very heavy into certain asset classes. And and they they have just part of their risk management is to not be, you know, really heavily exposed to one sector, right? So mm -hmm. it's, they may have gotten too heavily, you know, weighted towards apartments. And now they, even if the apartments are performing just fine, they're looking yeah. and, and sort of cherry picking like the strongest ones that they want to keep in refi and the rest of them, even though they're performing, they may just say, look, we're not, we're not going to uh, roll this over because we just need the cash. We need, we need to get our liquidity, you yeah. know, back, back where it should be. So. And it's not only banks that are having liquidity problems. We've been talking about Barry Sternlich from Starwood for a while now. Bloomberg just reported yesterday that they they have an opinion about why Barry is selling. And if you don't recall this, Barry Sternlich is selling 2,000 single-family homes. He built a portfolio of 3,800 over the last couple of years, so he's selling more than half. The, the question about the doomsayers out there is, okay, a billionaire is calling the top. Time to get out. Crash is coming. Another talk tracked by the doomers is single families are hard to manage. They're going to do something else. Neither of those are true. What happened is Starwood is having a redemption crisis and good old Barry needs some cash. So the only thing he could sell that has the ability to raise cash is single family homes. So billionaires are even filling this liquidity drain and having to sell off choice assets to raise cash. Yeah. Especially if they're exposed to other things, right. That are, that are, creating the problem yeah. like if they're exposed to office office right? yeah, exactly. you know especially yeah. i mean it, it it seems like the the doomsday scenarios even for you know for retail which you know supposedly amazon was was going to kill retail off dead as a doornail and that kind of, that didn't happen for some reason right. still plenty of retail out there so that's you know that that doesn't seem to be what's driving this it really seems to be just the the, the reality and the fear around yeah. uh, office and, and where that's going to go. At the end of the day, something I put out, uh, I guess, three or four weeks, months ago when I was doing a keynote in Fresno was that lending is going to get hard. At the time, I said lending was a three or a four, and I thought it would get to a nine. Uh, I think lending could already be at a six and a half or seven. Uh, I don't think it's done getting tighter. We, we're going to talk about rates in a minute. I think you know uh, we're seeing it go up. GDP was just revised up unemployment claims are down. So again, maybe we're going to get some more interest rate hikes. Maybe that spooks the banks and they don't want to give term sheets. And it's just wild out there. But at the end of the day, real estate of all ilk is a is a lending game. It's not a game of cash. So if the banks don't lend, deals stop. Yes. And uh, we that, can feel the that. Caveat, the caveat to that though, is that, you know, if you are sitting on cash, this is the best of all possible times to be buying, right? Because you have no competition out there because most of your competitors are dependent on getting bank loans to do deals, right? And yep. and it, so, I mean, I, I'm actually seriously, seriously thinking about putting a fund together because I because I see the opportunity to buy, you know, like I, I've said, I'm interested in hotels at the moment and mm -hmm. I see the opportunity to buy these hotels, which, you know, honestly, because of the way that they're run, 
they're hard to get bank financing for in the best of times, right? Now that it's really a bad lending environment, there is going to be almost no, I mean, the only other people who be buying hotels would be people coming with cash and who's mm-hmm. got, you know, three, 4 million in cash to buy a hotel with, and then another couple of million to, to do the renovations, right? That's, that's a small number of people. So yeah. if I can raise a fund to go do that, you know, go do the renovations, get these assets stabilized, and then go to the banks with assets that are like up and running, performing mm-hmm. really well, completely renovated. And we're, going in at low leverage, that's going to be a much easier sell for the banks. And then we can take the cash and recycle it into further deals. But I think, I think that's really the way that, uh, you know, doing business in the next couple of years Mm -hmm. is going to require, but if you can do it and it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm, I'm looking, you know, to do, to do go big. I mean, 25, $50 million maybe to, to do this. You don't have to go that big, right? If you're, if you're looking at single family homes and you can, you know, partner with three, four other people or 10 other people and get a million dollars in cash together, you guys will have some great buying opportunities, right? So, so think about that. You got to think kind of creatively and seller financing is going to be the other way to go, whether you're doing big deals or small deals, seller financing is going to suddenly become an option that sellers are, are much more open-minded to than they have. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what's coming up. And again, what I'm trying to help people understand is the lending environment when lending, this is actually what I said at the keynote, lending gets tougher, deals get better. It is that simple. Uh, if you happen to have cash, you know, put aside, like we've been building for a while, you happen to have relationships where you can grow private funds or do a fund in your example. Uh, this is a time to get shopping. It's a time to get greedy, uh, because you will do life changing deals in an environment like this. I, I look forward to banks getting, tighter because I I've been there before and I know what happens. So Jonathan, where can people follow you and maybe even see what your deals you're playing with? Yeah. So if you would like to join my investor list, please go to two bridges asset management. Uh, it's easier for you to just Google two bridges asset management LLC than it is for me to give you the, the URL, which is unfortunately a little hard to spell out. Um, but just Google me there, uh, set up an appointment with me. I uh, just, you know, sign up on the investor questionnaire my assistant Darlis will reach out to you to schedule a time. I'd love to meet you. I, I love talking to people from Allrat. You guys mm-hmm. have been great about joining my Facebook group, and a, a, a large number of you have come to join uh, to join the investor database as well. So I encourage you to uh, to you know come and say hello, and definitely get on the phone. And I'm happy to chat. Yeah, Jonathan is a wonderful person. I again, I went to his event in Vegas. I'm actually on his investor list. Um, so again, uh, Jonathan, I thank you. Uh, for all that you do, then you can come back every week. So thanks, man. Thank you.